Is triathlon the closest thing that humans have found to the fountain of youth? Sometimes I've thought that triathlon was trying to kill me. However, it turns out that triathlon might be one of the best things you can do for your longevity, literally extending how long you might live. Human Go have brought me here to the Human Powered Health Lab in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I'm going to be meeting some interesting people, doing some interesting tests, and maybe giving you this ultimate secret to how you can live longer, like a magic life extending pill. Except it isn't magic, and it isn't a pill. This is Bob Babbitt. Bob is 74 years old. He is one of triathlon's OGs and has been doing triathlons since before I was born. He participated in the third ever Ironman in Oahu, Hawaii in 1980. Despite his ever advancing age, Bob has shown no sign of slowing down, traveling the world to host Breakfast with Bob at championship triathlon events and hosting events for charity he helped found the Challenge Athletes Foundation. Bob attributes his vitality at his age to triathlon and his personal goal is to convince the world that triathlon is fun, challenging and beneficial for all ages. And he wants to live longer. And this is John Geffrom. John is Bob's longtime producer and he is 61 years old. He doesn't do triathlon. He has done one. It didn't stick. After letting himself go for a bit too long, John has made some major lifestyle changes recently and lost nearly 80 pounds. But now he's finding it challenging to keep that weight off and stay healthy. His goal is to maintain his weight, get fitter and build some lean muscle mass. Simply put, his primary goal is to live longer. And this is James Kanema. Me. James is 42 years old and by pretty much anyone's standards, he's in pretty good shape, if I do say so myself. James has done triathlons over 25 years, including doing it as his full-time job for over 12 of those years. And today his job, whilst significantly less active, still requires him to regularly do extreme endurance events and activities. His primary goal is to maintain or improve his fitness so he can continue to enjoy participating in endurance events for many years to come. And of course, I'd also like to live longer. We have all come from different locations and different backgrounds to the same place. The Human Powered Performance Lab here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Here we were put through a battery of tests to determine some stuff about us and what we each need to improve and discover some strategies to survive and thrive to a ripe old age. What are you hoping to learn here have you, in this test? You know what, I, I just want to get better. I've never done a VO2 max test. test? No. Never, Nothing like that? I've never done anything like that. So this like is all that. new to you? It's all brand new. new at 74. You know, because I think when we first got into it, it was an adventure. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always kept it as an adventure. Uh, there's, uh, most of the races I've gone to, I was never really prepared for them. Yeah. The tests we're doing today are all lab-based. You literally cannot do these tests at home. But stick around to the end of the video as we'll give all those people who don't live within driving distance of this lab here in Scottsdale, Arizona, some tests you can do at home and how you can use the information from those tests to help you live longer. So this is Carson Ganser, exercise physiologist here at Human Powered Health. Carson, thanks for having us here today. Yeah. What tests are we doing today? Yeah, so we're actually gonna be doing a full battery of tests. Um, the two primary that we're looking at are DEXA scans and VO2 max testing, but we're also gonna throw in a couple others in the mix uh, to get a really good look at, okay, are there any discrepancies between our left and right side? Uh, what's our overall muscle strength looking like and where can we improve? And what, what are we gonna learn from like a VO2 max test for Bob and John, for example. Yeah, so we're really we're gonna find out where they are now, which is always okay. really important to find out because if we want to increase, we have to know what our starting point is. And okay. so for Bob and John, once we get that starting point, we can develop a plan to see, okay, how can we stretch this out, make us the best, most fit individuals we could be and maximize our longevity and health span. Cool, let's get on with the tests. So the first test we're doing today is a DEXA scan. And DEXA scans were originally made to look at bone mineral density for osteopenia or osteoporosis. Um, but in the sporting realm and in the longevity realm, we're really utilizing it a lot more for looking at body fat percentage and muscle mass. Next, we have the RMR test, which is a resting metabolic rate test, which essentially tells you how many calories you're burning at rest. This information is really important if you're looking to maximize a diet plan, but it also gives you insight into how many carbs versus fat you're burning at rest. Grip strength is a test that we utilize to get a look at your total muscle capacity. It's also linked with numerous diseases and gives us an idea of how well you're going to be able to manage doing activities of daily living as we age. 
Force plate testing is utilized to essentially see how athletes move within space. It also gives us some insight into asymmetries between the limbs and gives us insight into where we want to go next with resistance training programming. One of the most important tests today for John and Bob is their VO2 max. A high VO2 max is crucial for endurance athletes as it allows quicker recovery between intense efforts and delayed fatigue. Essentially, all triathlon training, other than that that's working on muscular strength and endurance, is aiming to improve your VO2 max. It allows you to sustain an effort for longer and makes every effort level feel easier so you can go faster in your triathlon. A VO2 max test is a test designed to find out what your maximal consumption of oxygen is, utilizing your muscles while exercising. This value is really important to know as an athlete because it gives you direction in your training and to see where you're at, but it's also important for an everyday individual um, looking to live their longest life as a high VO2 max value is also associated with a longer health span and less disease. Three, two, one, if you want to keep going, keep going, jump, 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 jump. Up a side, up a side. Good, good, good. So unlike things like sex, genetics, uh, VO2 is actually highly responsive to our training. So when we're doing swimming, biking, running, especially at the intervals that lead to those mitochondrial changes, essentially what we're doing is our, we're causing our body to utilize more oxygen, but make us feel like we're working a little bit easier. But what if you're no longer interested in athletic performance or never were? Well, it turns out VO2 max is important for nearly anyone. So VO2 max is a really strong indicator of long-term health and our overall longevity. Numerous studies over the years have demonstrated that the higher our cardiorespiratory fitness is, the higher our correlation of reducing our death from all-cause mortality is. For instance, in a 2018 Copenhagen study tracking over 5,000 men for 46 years, uh, we found that the highest midlife VO2 max lived nearly five years longer on average than the least fit group. It has been shown that for every additional one milliliter per kilogram per minute of oxygen utilization, uh, we get an associated 45 extra days of life. Very good, very good, nice. Wow. After some discussion with the exercise physiologist here, I've decided to change my plan a little bit and rather than just doing a VO2 max test, I'm also gonna do a lactate threshold test as part of the VO2 max test. I'm doing them all at once in one because it's gonna give me a little bit more information for my actual endurance goals. VO2 max is obviously important and interesting number to know, but lactate threshold gives me far more accurate zones for my future endurance training. For James, we also added in lactate testing. For a lactate test, we have James running at a couple of different specific paces until he reaches steady state. Then we do a quick prick of the finger, collect a small blood sample, and see the lactate concentration within that blood. As the paces increase, so will James's lactate accumulation. So when James is trying to focus on reaching his VO2 max goals or increasing his LT2, he knows the specific zones that he needs for his body instead of just kind of guessing or going off of a watch's prediction. Now it's time to find out how we all did. None of us had any significant surprises in our DEXA scan or resting metabolic rate tests. My test did show a high resting heart rate and over-reliance on carbs, but most likely this was due to travel stress and not so accurate on this particular day. The DEXA scan also showed no bone mineral density issues for any of us, particularly impressive at Bob's age. John had some lean muscle imbalances left to right from a previous injury, as did Bob on a knee injury. But all in all, a clean bill of health on the scans. I was particularly proud of my grip strength results, smashing the population norms on that one, probably skewed by a former life as a rock climber. But as a measure of ability to do activities of daily living, all of us did really well on this. The force plates told John and I that we were not particularly explosive. No surprises there. Bob skipped this to protect his lower back. But we were all in decent shape too. I was surprised I was so symmetrical. The real interesting result for us today was VO2 max. So, starting with myself, I got my finger pricked multiple times for a lactate test too. The results of that are interesting uh, to no one but me. 
but I do now have very accurate heart rate zones. I then emptied the tank to get my VO2 max. Ouch. I hit a very respectable 66.32 milliliters per minute per kg. Not as good as it once was in the past, but way above population norms. And John, having not done triathlon? Well, he was a bit lower, in the 35th percentile at 26.7 mils per kg per minute. Definitely room for improvement there, something John intends to work on. But does doing triathlon mean that Bob, at 74 years old, is adding years to his life? Well, yes. He hit 37.5 milliliters per kg per minute. If triathlon caused this high VO2 max, and VO2 max indeed means you live longer, Bob has many more vital years ahead of him. Essentially, all we've learned so far is that the fitter you are, the longer you will live. And we've actually put numbers on that data for each of us on how fit we actually are. But what are we supposed to do with that information? How do we use this information going forward? So you really can't manage what you don't measure. Uh, so when we come into a lab like Human Powered Health, or if we go through some of the human go testing, the real purpose of this is to find out where are we lacking. Elite athletes do this frequently with their coaches. We can do this on our own now if we like to. And it's really important to really be able to measure how am I getting my changes? Am I reaching those changes? Do I need to change my game plan overall? And it's a bit like looking at diagnostics on your car. If you find out that your alternator's broken, we don't really need to do anything with the gas tank, right? And so now that we've had James in here, John in here, Bob in here, we've provided them with some new zones, right? Zones one through five, we are all familiar with zone two and the benefits of that, but if James is, James is looking to increase his lactate thresholds, he knows he needs to push his fourth zone. We've provided him a new, more accurate zone four for doing that. And for Bob and John, we've provided them with some good ranges to work on that VO2 max and some recommendations to do so. In fact, all of these lab results will be automatically uploaded into the Human Go app, and then will be used to prescribe our training going forward for whatever our goals are. But of course, not everyone can come into a lab like this to do all these tests, to get the results to put into their training program. But there is a solution. You could just use the numbers that your smart sports watch spits out at you, what your VO2 max is, what your lactate threshold is. But those can be pretty inaccurate. Another thing you could do though, is to actually test yourself at home. Obviously not with the big mask and the finger pricks and all of that kind of stuff. However, on the Human Go app, you simply go into a performance test, you load it onto your program on whichever day you choose, although the app will suggest what days you might get your best results from, and then you simply upload that session into your sports watch or whatever device you're using. It'll guide you through the whole test session you upload it to the app, and the app does the rest. It'll calculate what your VO2 max is, what your threshold is, and it will give you the zones that you can use to prescribe the rest of your training from then on. And you can get this too. Click the link in the description below this video to download the Human Go app and get an exclusive GTN viewer discount on the next Human Go training program. So as I said earlier, my goal is to get fitter and live longer. But these days, my training tends to come in spurts. You see, I set up some crazy GTN challenge and I train really well for a while for the GTN challenge. And then I move on and I kind of don't have a challenge, so I don't train very much at all until the next challenge comes up. I'm in one of those gaps right now. I don't really have anything to train for, and so I'm not training very specifically. Really, it would be better if all of these tests came at a time when I was right at the beginning of one of my big GTN challenges, like the hour a day. Or not, because that is exactly what Human Go and Human Powered Health are trying to address. You don't need an Ironman or a marathon or a half marathon or any big goal in order to have a training program and stick to it. You can have a simple goal such as improve my VO2 max and you put that into the app and it'll spit out a program based around your life and the time you have available to specifically get you towards that goal. And that's pretty useful, particularly for me when I'm in like an off season, because I could put improve my VO2 max into it. And for the next few weeks, fitting around my life, I'll have a program that improves my VO2 max and gets me fitter. So that when I do start the next crazy GTN challenge, I'm actually ready for it. Me, ready 
for a GTN challenge. First time for everything. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Pretty fascinating. Yeah, really, really. pretty amazing how much insights they can get from those those few tests we did. So I guess my question now is, where are you guys going from here? What's What's next? Let's start with you, Bob. Okay, well, for me, I'm 74, I turn 75 next May, but realistically, USA Triathlon age, I turn 75 in January. So I want to get... Oh, uh, you're going up an age group. I go up an age oh. group, I age it up, baby. So you're the youngest in your age I group, I want to kick all those 75-year-old butts, <laughs> right? That's the goal, I want to get faster. Uh, and I, I think I got some good starting points here, learning to, I need to do more weight work, I need to do some speed work, yeah. which I sort of knew, some, but some now weight, you really know it. Some, the weight, magnifying some glass. weight bearing stuff to, weight bearing to stuff. stop that moan, bone normal density going yeah. down, because that's going to lead to injuries later on, so exactly. it's something you need to. Uh, are you going to follow a training program? Have you ever followed a training I've program? I've never followed a training program. I have a little How did you get this far in draft? I and calendar. never followed a training program. I should have brought program. my calendar when I got a little thing on so whatever February of 1980 when I did Iron Man 2.4, 112, 26.2, a little circle. That, well, if we, if we set day. up, all, if we took all of your data from this thing and put it into the Human Go app and gave you that, would you follow a plan if we set you up with one? Yes, I would follow a plan. All right. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll I'm, do that. Okay, what about you, John? What, uh, what did you take from all of this? Uh, well, I know that I, I needed work in areas and I see potentials and now I know where uh, my baselines are. And uh, I think uh, it was quite interesting, the level of depth. Yeah, the amount of information. Uh, to me today about who I am, what I can do. And I'm looking forward to make improvements on that. Yeah. For sure. The main thing for me is just where, how far John has come. Yeah. I mean, because we're talking to a guy who's lost 80 pounds in but the last couple of years. But it's interesting because we, he came in here today and asked him when we arrived, what are your goals? And he said, I think I need to get a little bit, he, he didn't say it in as many words, but I think he wants to get shredded. Right. Like, <laughs> a little more definition. Yeah, that was a little, a little bit more definition. Yeah. Yeah. Get shredded. Right. And uh, that was exactly what all those results yeah, were saying. Was. It was like, you now need to work on your lean muscle mass because you've lost the weight, but now you need to get exactly. the muscles. I sense that. Now I know that. All in all. Very interesting. So fun. Thank you so really. much for coming, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Safe travels back. We'll see you at the next triathlon. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe at an Ironman. You going to do an Ironman no, next year? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Not getting them to commit to that. <laughs> no. <laughs> What well, a big thank you to Human Go and Human Powered Health for hosting us here today. Uh, I think John and Bob and myself have all gained far more insights than we actually thought we would into our health and our fitness. I'm just left wondering, does setting a goal which isn't a race actually make me old? I thought the whole point of this trip was to make me younger. I've never done anything like this. I've never, have you done, I've, I've worn masks done? a lot of times, but never run a treadmill. <laughs> I, I'm not going to probe further into that. But <laughs> Someone like yourself, you sort of knew exactly what you were going to do in this one bike and run. I had no idea if I was going to finish or not. All right. And I had no idea what the, what the event really was, so I put Pannier sleeping bag and tent on the bike because I thought you swam 2.4, rode bike 56, yeah. camped out, <laughs> yeah. rode back the next day and ran the marathon. I, I didn't really know that you did the whole thing in one did day. You, did you use the sleeping bag? Did I actually tossed it to the crew halfway during the bike ride. Okay. Yeah. When I got out of the water, there was a, a family in the shower, so I had to wait for the family to get out of the shower. No roads were blocked off, nothing like that. And I'm thinking, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this thing in one day. I thought it was going to take me two days. There's going to be bands at the finish. There's going to be cheerleaders. I can't wait to see all the festivities at the finish line. And I come rolling into the park, and there's a light bulb up there, and there's a chalk line, and I hear a voice in the darkness. He's like, hey, you. I'm like, yeah. You in the race? Yeah. You're done. It was like one guy doing one-arm push-ups in the park and me. And that was it. But it was like one of those things when I finished that race, I knew I was changed.